file foundations what are the file foundations why we need file foundation what are the factors we need to consider when designing file foundations what are the main type of file foundations how do we design the file foundation what parameters we need to consider in designing file foundations in bearing script skin friction so let discuss i am prasad from structural guide you are welcome to the structural guide youtube channel please subscribe by youtube channel you may get the notification on new videos what is file foundation it is a type of foundation constructed deep into the ground and it is mostly circular in shape file are rested on the rock hard soil layer or socketed in the rock file foundation resistance is formed from the skin friction and the in bearing in addition to the this positive skin friction there are negative skin friction also in bearing is mostly from the rock or that is from the soil that file is rested why we need file foundations when vertical load high and foundation or the structure cannot be rested on the shallow foundation we have to provide the file foundations when you have a weak soil layers you have to go the go for the file foundations because you may not be able to rest the structure on shallow foundation soil like peat is there in the underneath layers you might not be able to construct the shallow foundation to rest the structure when you have a tensile forces develop in the structure you may need to you may need the anchor pile in such cases you might need to have a pile foundations when you have a lateral loads in such cases also you may need the pile foundation because now shallow foundation can get certain level of lateral load uh, by the friction and the lateral load pressure but when you have very high loads applied on the structure and also we can't allow deformations in the structure you have to resist the lateral movement permanently in such cases you have to have a inclined piles anchored into the rock then they can resist the lateral movement there won't be a deflections if you have a shallow foundation there may be a lateral deflection due to the friction with the friction there may be movement but if you construct the structure on the with the pile foundation there won't be a lateral movement because the pile can rest on the rock also we can construct the inclined piles in addition now when when you construct a high rise building they might not be able to construct on the shallow foundations always you might need to go for a deep foundation because they have very high axial loads in those situations we are using the pile foundations factors affecting design and construction of pile foundations first factor is the load from the superstructure the most important thing load apply on a pile so superstructure load will be definitely affect on the pile design condition of the soil depending on the soil the skin friction will be way when the soil is like peat there may be compressible nature in the soil then there may be a negative skin frictions if we have a good soil or the uh, soil with the positive skin friction you can take it and also we have to keen or we have to consider the soil like peat or compressible soil that then with negative skin friction condition of the rock it's also need to consider when you design a pile rqd and core core values indicate the condition of the rock when you do the bore hole you can calculate rqd and core recovery based on that we can have a judgment in addition you can refer the rock coring samples and have a get an idea about the condition of rock whether there are fractures or 
whether there are no fractures, the condition of the rock is good or not, all those can be identified. In addition, you have to consider the cost of the construction, not like shallow foundation or footings or rough foundation. Sometimes the pile foundation cost is very high because in the pile construction, we need to have construct the piles then pile caps, ground beams, all those you have to construct. Therefore, cost may be high. So you have to consider the cost also when you go for the pile foundations. Accessibility to the site. Now heavy machine need to use for the file construction. So there should be adequate access to the site and there should be adequate space to rotate and move the machines. Clear clearance from the boundaries. Sometimes due to the space limitations, you may try to construct the pile at very close to the boundary. But there are limitations because you can't move the machine to the boundary sometimes based on the boundary condition there may be structures built close to the boundary so you may not be able to construct the pile at the boundary if you move the pile at pile to the boundary the, the piling machine may damage the adjoining structures those have to be considered in addition in during the construction you have to consider the sound levels and vibration levels Depending on the regulation in that particular area, you have to limit those values. There are standards for these values, so we have to monitor this value, vibration induced by the filing and sound induced due to this construction work. Those has to be monitored and you have to make sure they are within the limits. Type of file foundations. Board files, that also called as a cast in situ. Board files, driven files, mostly they are precast. There may be steel files also. Micro files, there may be steel files or timber files or, or reinforced concrete files. Mostly the smaller diameter reinforced concrete cast in situ files also considered as micro files. Sheet files, you can see in this figure also anchored sheet pile wall here. This is anchored sheet pile wall. So, these are very useful type of construction work. They, they, they may sometimes they may be a temporary structure, sometimes they may be considered as a permanent structures. Timber piles. All days we use timber piles. Screw files. In small scale buildings, we use screw files because they can they cannot carry very high load, but small scale buildings can be rested on screw files. Also, when you do the rectifying of, st of structures, also we do screw files because uh, they are very easy to install when compared to the other type of files such as driven files and uh, cast in situ files. How to design file foundations? What are the factors you need to consider when you are designing file foundations? Mainly, mainly you have to consider following things. Skin friction, end bearing, and a structural capacity. We'll discuss all those about in detail. Skin friction and end bearing are the geotechnical capacity of the file. Then structural capacity coming from the reinforcement. So geotechnical capacity can be assessed as you can see in these equations. The equation, the end bearing and the skin friction. Those two have to add together to calculate the file bearing capacity. You can find the ultimate capacity or you can cal calculate service capacity. So if you find the ultimate capacity, you may divide it by the factor of safety depending on your standard. So if you add these to all together, the factor of safety may be in the range of 2.5 to 4. There may be different method used for this evaluation. One might use individual, individual factor of safety for each of them and then evaluate the allowable, uh, allowable pile geotechnical capacity. Structural design you have to do the as per the general or as per the specific uh, guideline in the file design. Special thing you have to consider in this structural capacity is the ground condition. Now, if you have a good solid ground condition up to the rock, then uh, you can consider axial capacity as a 
gen by general ca general calculations but if you have a very weak soil underneath the top soil layer like peat when they can't and the when the pile is pile lateral restriction is not provided by the soil if you have a peat soil it's a very weak soil it may not be able to restrain the pile lateral in such case the pile has to be designed considering its effective height its buckling effect need to be considered when you design the pile that you have to keep in mind you cannot just find the minimum reinforcement area from the equations given but you have to consider this buckling effect and you have to do design the pile accordingly skin friction they it has a two component positive and negative skin friction in bearing you depending on where you rested the pile you have to consider you may rest on the rock after socketing or else you may rest the pile on the hard soil layer if you can't find the rock close by in the casting sur board side board files in in the case of driven piles we always try to rest on the hard soil layer before most of time before going into the rock because driven piles mostly we use for the low axial load capacity structures structural capacity also you can find as we discuss previously you have to find the reinforcement area and this pile size may be done accordingly also calculation of the skin friction skin friction have two component as as we discussed so the positive skin friction also we can calculate by using different equations a positive skin friction have two parts it provide by the soil and it provide by the rock when you do the socketing of the piles in the rock there you have to you can consider the skin friction in the rock then above the rock up to the ground level you may have a different type of soil layers there you can consider the the positive skin friction there the negative skin friction also you have to consider if you have a very weak soil like compressible soil uh, you have to consider the negative skin friction for example if you have peat it, it could compress therefore negative skin friction will be developed that has to be considered because negative skin friction act against the positive skin friction it reduce the pile geotechnical capacity how to calculate the skin friction values in sand as per the overburden and the friction between piles we calculate the skin friction you can use the correlation between spt and cpt when you want to calculate the skin friction on the sand in the clay you can use the lambda alpha and beta method to calculate the skin friction in addition the correlation within cpt method also you can use to calculate the skin friction you can refer this any book for these equations though those equations are given in the literature and the books so you can use these equations we have to know the geotechnical parameters soil parameters you have to know so if you have done the geotechnical investigation proper investigation you may you may have this geotechnical data with you so with that you can calculate this skin friction values rock and weather rock also you have to calculate so from the geotechnical investigation report you might be able to get those values negative skin friction also you have to calculate based on the equations given in the relevant code or standard you may also refer to the literature for more information how to calculate nbre <coughs> nbre may be on the soil may be on the rock when you have a when you construct in cast in situ board file sometimes you may not be able to wrap the pile on the rock that's because you may not find the bedrock close by in some countries the bedrock is far as 300 meters below the ground level so such case sometimes you may not be able to go that deep when you need to construct the pile 
therefore you might terminate the pile at lower level if you if you can reach the geotechnical capacity therefore those in 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 bearing at the rock and in bearing at the soil you may need to calculate when you design the piles how to calculate the in bearing in bearing in soils you can use the mayhoff methods Pansy's method, clone and castellone method, correlation between SPT and CPT method. So the sound, how I spell this or how I spoke about this word may be different, uh, but you may refer to these methods. You can refer the this method you may refer when you find in the in bearing of the rock soil. So, in bearing of the rock may be determined by the geotechnical investigation. You may take the during the geotechnical investigation, you may take the rock sample. There, you may test the rock sample, then you may get the rock capacity. That is, your actual compressive strength you can find. With that, you can calculate the in bearing. So, in this calculation, you may consider the RQD and co recovery values also because they also need to consider when you evaluate when you provide in the in bearing of the rock because if it if the rock that particular rock sample may be sound quality in sound quality but there may fractures on the rock therefore you have to consider all those when you design in the piles also when you coming into conclusion on the in bearing of the rock with that, we end the today, today's discussion. Today, we discuss about pile foundations, type of the pile foundation, design challenges, what are the things you need to consider in designing pile foundation. Let's meet again from new video. Thank you very much.